Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be trying to repair this old Tycho chassis system locomotive. Uh, this locomotive was uh, sent to me as a gift uh, to repair by David Z to G scale, and uh, I'm not entirely sure what's wrong with it. Uh, as most people that have worked on old Tycho's would know, uh, the power torque motors, as they were known, were not uh, the most reliable uh, out there. Uh, they have uh, pancake motors, so there's not so much torque. They just geared them uh, to pull more torque. But uh, yeah, they're known for a variety of issues, so it could be any number of them. But uh, whatever the case, we're going to try to get this thing to start. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is take it over to the track and see if we can get it to uh, at least move under its own power or something like that. Kind of figure out what the situation is, basically. But uh, yeah, as I recall, I don't think this thing runs. Let's find out. All right, so we're going to set this thing up to try to figure out what exactly is going on with it. I'm also going to give all of you watching this some basic tips to troubleshoot any locomotive that won't start. Anyway, to begin, what we're going to do is we're just going to try uh, giving it some power here. And uh, it doesn't seem to be moving. Uh, although we seem to have working headlights, so that's interesting. Uh, so if we come back over here, what we can see is that um, we've got uh, voltage going to the track, but uh, no current, which means the motor is not picking up the power. Uh, now, I know not everybody out there has a controller like this one. Um, but just putting a locomotive on the track and giving it some power can tell you a lot about what's going on with it. Uh, so, in this uh, particular situation, uh, what's going on is there is power coming up through the trucks, but it is not getting to the motor. So there's either a broken wire between uh, the trucks and uh, the motor brushes, the plates for the motor brushes, or there's a problem with the motor brushes themselves. Uh, alternatively, if you put a locomotive on the track and uh, the motor is making a humming noise but it won't move, uh, that's usually a sign of a seized motor, so there's something caught in the gearbox, uh, or there's, ju there's just a problem basically somewhere that's uh, preventing it from turning over, like a piece of dirt in one of the gears, a whole variety of things. And then, uh, of course, if you put a locomotive on the track and you don't have uh, the light come on and the motor's not making any noise, that can be a sign of a bad connection somewhere. Uh, between the uh, truck and the motor and all the rest of it. And then finally, uh, a locomotive that doesn't make any sound, uh, that doesn't have a working light, uh, can also be a sign that something's shorted. So with those basic rules in mind, you can pretty much figure out what uh, the problem is on any locomotive you're working on. Anyway, let's get uh, working on uh, this one. So to start off, we're just going to uh, put a screwdriver in here, and we're just going to kind of Try down, you see, we just kind of leverage it under there, and uh, this piece then uh, pops out. And from there, you can do all sorts of different things. Uh, first one is we'll try to take off this piece right here, bend it outwards, and it will pop right off like that. And now, for there's always this clip, and this connects the truck to this plastic piece. Usually, if you just kind of squeeze it, it uh, and push up, it will uh, it will pop right out. Anyway, the wires uh, all seem to be connected, so yeah, I'm really not sure what's going on with this locomotive. So we're gonna start disassembling this. Uh, usually, there are three screws at the bottom, and usually they're Phillips head, but in this case, they, there's just one screw and it's a flat head, so that's uh, kind of unusual. I don't, I haven't seen that too much. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's not uh, the most common. It could be an older or newer uh, variety. I, I'm, not, I'm no expert uh, on, on these types of locomotives, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, and in this case, I guess you have to pry up on these clips because that's what they did to sacrifice that extra screw. Yeah, I just figure if we disassemble this thing and kind of clean it all up, it will probably spring back to life. I think the problem, since uh, the motor didn't seem to be getting power, is probably in the springs. Now, in most cases, you would have to lift off these plates, but um, we're just going to have to unscrew it because this is a uh, slightly different design. So getting this back in uh, is going to be interesting. I, don't, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I have a recommended way for this particular kind because usually you can kind of slide these over, but in this case, uh, you can't. So, yeah, I'm really not sure how the 
plates are fastened. So we're going to take those screws off and then we're going to lift up this cover. But I have to be careful because these, uh, there's are springs pushing against the brushes. So when we lift this, if I'm not careful, they can fire out. There's a, so there are the springs. Now this is interesting because uh, the brushes seem to be uh, free and uh, the springs are in good shape. So that was my first guess of what the problem could be. Commutator super dirty, that might be the problem. Now I've got a little piece of uh, paper towel and uh, the contact and lubricant. Now I don't ne necessarily recommend this stuff because uh, I don't know what the long-term uh, effects of it are. Um, and that's why I've been using it on so many of my restorations because I want to find out what they are. But uh, I have to say so far in the short term, uh, it's been doing a pretty good job. I mean, look how much dirt that lifted off the commutator. I'm hoping this armature is still good. Um, I mean, there is always a chance it went bad, which is not entirely uncommon on these old uh, Tyco uh, power torque pancake motors. But this one doesn't appear to be in uh, terrible shape. The magnets even still have some strength in them. So yeah, I really, I really don't know. Yeah, it's all spotless on the inside here. Weird. All right, we're now going to put the uh, gearbox back together. Um, we're just going to put a tiny bit of lubricant on all of the pivots. And as always, you really don't need much. And put this uh, larger gear on. Another thing you should always check for, and it's not really a problem in this case, but uh, is to make sure there's no dried up grease or bits of dirt in the uh, teeth of the gears. Because if there is, uh, it can actually lock the gearbox up. It uh, really doesn't take much to lock a gearbox up. One piece of dirt in the right place. And uh, I always coat the top of this gear with some oil because in this case, these two gears uh, can rub up against each other sometimes. So just putting a bit of lubricant between them uh, doesn't hurt. Yeah, you wanna know something. There's a piece of flashing from uh, when this thing left the factory and it's causing this gearbox to seize. Let me show you. So I'm not sure how well you can uh, see that, but this little spot right here is an example of some not so great craftsmanship on uh, Tyco's part. Uh, when these gears are made, there's a little piece of flashing that connects them to the mold that they're bored in. And uh, it needs to be trimmed off, otherwise it can cause uh, problems. In this case, uh, if we turn this gear, watch, you can see it's turning, it's turning, but it will hit the teeth and you see it locks the gearbox. So this locomotive has had problems since it left the factory uh, due to uh, poor craftsmanship. So we're gonna shear off that little piece of flashing there and uh, it will make this turn over properly. All right, I'm gonna try to show this bit in detail here. That is a tough piece of flashing. Yeah, that's already much better. There's a few little scrapes now, but uh, that's not gonna really affect much. But uh, yeah, that piece of flashing uh, was definitely causing some problems. So now as you can see, since we've removed that piece of flashing, it's uh, turning quite free and uh, happily, which is, uh, that's exactly what you want right there. No binding. Looks like I stand corrected on that dust in hair. It's very tough to see sometimes, but it can be there. We're now going to uh, put the uh, spring plate all uh, back together. Now this is again something that, uh, this is not how you commonly do this. So uh, yeah, I would, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure what you would do in this situation to be honest with you. This is the only thing I can think of without removing uh, the metal plates on the other side. So we drop a spring in here, and the other spring in there, obviously. And we'll put a tiny bit of oil contact cleaner on the commutator, really not much. And we'll put the other brush in.
So in this case, the brushes have to be directly over the holes. And then uh, this piece, the pivot gear, holds the armature in place. And we just lower the whole assembly over top of it. Just like that. All right, the axles are all cleaned up. So now we're going to lubricate each of the bearings by putting a little slick of oil over each of them. This one right here that doesn't have the metal part goes in the middle. Those two go on the sides. So we've now got this screw in, but I've made a bit of a mistake. I forgot these parts. So it looks like we're gonna have to get out the oversized soldering iron and unsolder the wires that go to each of the tabs on the motor. So there's that piece. Oh, and uh, you can always add a little bit of lubricant right here because this piece does pivot and uh, it will just help this turn because some Tycho's, uh, this doesn't turn so freely and that can cause problems. Okay, I think we're uh, pretty close to done here. We uh, must get the metal wheels on opposite sides though, that's important. Okay, everything seems good. Why don't we go uh, try testing her? So let's give her some power here. Hey, look at that. Wow, that fixed right up. So uh, yeah, it's not it's not running too bad. It's not the fastest one I've seen, but it's doing a decent speed. It's uh, pretty quiet actually for a power torque. It's about as uh, quiet as they go. And it's making a bit of odd noise right there. But uh, yeah, overall it seems to be running fine. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. Not bad. You can't uh, expect these uh, old power torques to run flawlessly, but uh, this is pretty good. It's not even objecting to the switches, which is interesting. You see it's coasting right over them, so... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know what's causing that noise. Actually, I know what it is. It's the handrail. I think it's hitting those passenger cars. Well, folks, I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you all enjoyed. And uh, with that, I want to thank you all uh, so much for watching.